Welcome to Bite Size. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Cash Baby. And that is level 1 and level 2 Cash. As Intel was running out of megahertz possibilities, they turned to another approach to make the Pentium faster. The trick was basically they put two 486s in one chip side by side. Technically, each one of these 486s is called an instruction pipeline for reasons I don't quite understand. The first one's called the U and the second one's called the V. Whether or not the A and the B or the, the Herbert and the Melvin, I don't know. But one of those pipelines has a math coprocessor and the other doesn't. So it's almost like having a chip with a 486DX and a 486SX. Here's another term. Multi-pipeline CPUs, and the theory with multi-pipeline CPUs is that we can run multiple things at the same time. The multi-pipeline CPUs are called superscalar CPUs. The Pentium pulls in a bunch of instructions out of memory and tries to execute them two at a time, keeping both pipelines busy. Many computers designed since around 1987 have included cache RAM on their motherboards. The 486 took the idea of cache a step further, however, in that the 486 line of chips was the first in the x86 family to include cache RAM. With the exception of the DX4, they all contain 8K of internal cache. The DX4 doubled that amount to 16K, but even that small amount can significantly affect CPU performance. But while a few K of cache is nice, it'd be nicer to have more. Most 90s desktop motherboards add from 64K to 1024K more static RAM cache to the motherboard. That's not internal cache, however, as it's not internal to the CPU. It's external cache, and it's commonly called L2 cache. The internal cache of the 486 and later processors is called L1 cache. Now L1 cache is built into the processor and usually runs at a speed equaling the internal processor speed. The core frequency. The Pentium's cache system is better than the 486's in four ways. First, the Pentium has twice as much cache with two 8K caches, one for data and one for program code. Second, the cache's method of organizing its cache data is more efficient using a write-back algorithm. The opposite of a write-back algorithm, a write-through algorithm, forces data to the SRAM cache memory to be immediately written to the slower DRAM memory. That means that memory reads can come out of a cache quickly, but memory writes must always occur at the slower DRAM time. Reasoning that not every piece of information written to memory stays in memory very long, the Pentium's cache algorithm puts off writing data from SRAM to DRAM for as long as possible, unlike the 486, which uses a write-through cache. Third, the cache controller wastes time in searching to see if an item is in the cache. The Pentium reduces that time by dividing the cache into smaller caches, each of which can be searched more quickly. That technique is called a two-way set associative cache. And lastly, Pentium processors have cache controllers built into them with branch prediction capabilities. So, that's four ways that the Pentium makes better use of your memory than the 486 did.